My name is Jamie Walton. I am the president and co-founder of the nonprofit organization, the Wayne Foundation. During this presentation, we will explore the definition of domestic minor sexual trafficking in the United States, examine the lack of statistics available, overview legislation efforts at the federal and state levels, discuss the role of law enforcement as first responders, and give suggestions on how you can support the eradication of domestic minor sexual trafficking within your own community. The FBI reports that between 2008 and 2010, 83 percent of confirmed sexual trafficking victims in the United States were U.S. citizens. Forty percent of those cases involved the trafficking of children. Sex trafficking is defined by the United Nations as human trafficking for the purpose of commercial sexual exploitation. The United States federal government further defines sex trafficking as a commercial sex act induced by force, fraud, or coercion, or in which the person induced to perform such an act has not attained 18 years of age. The term commercial sex act means any sex act in which anything of value is given to or received by any person. Domestic minor sexual trafficking is defined as U.S. citizens or lawful permanent residents under the age of 18 who have been recruited, harbored, transported, provided, or obtained to perform commercial sex acts. The sexual trafficking of children is the focus of this presentation. I myself was a victim of sexual trafficking when I was 14 years old here in the United States. There are many mi common misconceptions about this terrible crime and who can be affected by it. Domestic minor sexual trafficking victims, who are they? Sexual trafficking is a form of modern day slavery. Much of the focus about this topic has been centered around the issue from an international standpoint. The commercial sexual exploitation of children includes pornography, child sex tourism, forced or arranged marriage, trafficking of children for sexual, sexual purposes, and the prostitution of children. Here in the United States, we assume that our children are safe from these dangers. Sadly, this is not the case. The sexual trafficking of minor children in the United States is commonly referred to as domestic minor sexual trafficking. This term has been created with the specific intent of further defining an ever-growing problem within our country. The law does not require proof that coercion, fraud, or force was used to induce the minor to engage in a commercial sex act in order to consider them a victim of severe trafficking. Their age automatically grants them legal status as a victim rather than as a criminal. The most common factor among human trafficking victims is poverty. Domestic minor sexual trafficking victims are no different. Victims are often from low-income backgrounds, but children of any economic status can be at risk. According to Shared Hope International, the average age a victim enters the sex trade is 12 years old. Teen runaways are often targeted by traffickers, sometimes referred to as pimps. Their lack of family instability and support education, and income make runaways a prime target for those who would exploit those weaknesses through coercion or through violence. There has been a lot of controversy over the last few years about the actual number of domestic minor sexual trafficking victims within the United States. Until recently, the federal government estimated that 100 to 300,000 300, children had already been victimized. After some scrutiny, this statement was changed to read 100 to 300,000 children who are at risk of being victimized. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children estimates that there are 100 to 293,000 children at risk for domestic minor sexual trafficking in the United States. DMST is invisible, so it is difficult to come up with definitive statistics. Victims who are lucky enough to be found by law enforcement can be misidentified as juvenile delinquents. Logically speaking, we can't accurately count the number of children who are being victimized because they are hidden, but often right in plain sight. Human trafficking laws within the United States. The human trafficking laws in our country vary greatly, depending upon the level of government involved. 
In the year 2000, the U.S. federal government passed the Trafficking Victims Protection Act, commonly referred to as the TVPA. This act created a two-tiered definition of trafficking, which included several forms of trafficking in persons and sex trafficking. The TVPA has changed slightly over the years as more information about the crime of human trafficking becomes available. This act has been reauthorized in 2003, 2005, 2008, and in 2013 as Title 12 of the Violence Against Women Reauthorization Act. Part of the original TVPA bill provided that the U.S. State Department release an annual report on human trafficking called the Trafficking in Persons Report. This report has been issued from 2001 through 2013. The Trafficking in Persons TIP report is the U.S. government's principal diplomatic tool to engage foreign governments on human trafficking. It is also the world's most comprehensive resource of government anti-human trafficking efforts and reflects the U.S. government's commitment to the global leadership on this key human rights and law enforcement issue. It represents an updated global look at the nature and scope of trafficking in persons and the broad range of government action to confront and eliminate it. It is important to note that in 2013, the Trafficking in Persons Report for the United States said that the Department of Justice had allowed for federal funding for victim services to support domestic citizen victims of human trafficking as well as foreign national victims. State laws are much more varied. The International Anti-Trafficking Organization Polaris Project has done a wonderful job in identifying the individual state legislative needs for protecting human trafficking victims and prosecuting their abusers. They rate each state by tracking the presence or absence of 10 categories of state statutes that they believe to be critical in the anti-trafficking legal framework. States are rated on a scale of conditions met by state laws. Polaris uses a system of four tiers to rate each, each state. As of 2013, 32 states were given a Tier 1 ranking, the highest ranking in the system. Impressively, New Jersey and Washington are the first states to meet all 10 legislative requirements. First responders, the role of law enforcement. Members of law enforcement agencies are often the first to come in contact with human trafficking victims of all types, but in particular for domestic minor sexual trafficking victims. In recent years, many agencies have trained their officers in anti-trafficking strategy and operations. Law enforcement officials are often trained using a model developed by the U.S. Department of Justice. This model implements the following guidelines. Ensures that the task force members have a clear understanding of human trafficking in all of its forms. Teaches participants to assist all types of victims regardless of citizenship, nationality, language, gender, type of trafficking, or age. Reviews the current and federal state human trafficking laws and legislation. Encourages agencies to develop collaborations with service providing organizations that are trained to provide for victims unique needs. And promotes victim centered response by focusing on the first contact victim assessment and accurately defining the rights of trafficking victims. Despite comprehensive law enforcement training the rescuing of domestic minor sexual trafficking victims is not enough. A recent FBI sting dubbed Operation Cross Country rescued 105 sexually exploited children from 70 cities around the United States. Footage showed some of these rescued victims in plastic handcuffs. Stacey Sheehan, the Director of Case Analysis Division of the FBI, is quoted as saying, if there is nowhere to hold them and nowhere safe for them to go, law enforcement has no alternative. If they aren't placed in a juvenile detention facility, the child could run back into the prostitution scenario. To avoid this, police charge the children with prostitution and place them in detention facilities until housing elsewhere becomes available, according to Sheehan. She insists that recovering juveniles from trafficking is the highest priority for the FBI. The incarceration of domestic minor sexual trafficking victims only reinforces the notion that they are willing participants engaged in criminal activity 
and susceptible to possible punishments. This can cause trauma for the victim to be worsened. Many organizations around the country are attempting to create homes for these survivors to be placed in for rehabilitative services, but the number of service providers in comparison to the number of potential victims is vastly disproportionate. The superheroes of the public, what you can do to help. The most valuable weapon we have in the fight against human trafficking is the general public. Motivating others to act is a challenge. I hope my presentation today and my work with the Fount Wayne Foundation encourages people to become involved in our organization's mission. The key to success is increasing the public's awareness of the domestic minor sexual trafficking problem and the challenges its victims face. There are many ways that you can become involved as well. Spread the word. Tell everyone that you know that slavery still exists and it is happening all around us in all 50 states. Raising awareness helps to end sexual exploitation of children. Keep your eyes open. Report any suspicious activity or persons to the National Human Trafficking Resource Center. Keep their toll-free number in your cell phone and share it with people you know. The number is 1-888-373-7833. The National Human Trafficking Resource Center hotline operates 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and 365 days a year. Use it to report tips, connect with anti-trafficking services in your own community, or to request general information about domestic minor sexual trafficking. The National Human Trafficking Resource Center is operated by the anti-trafficking nonprofit Polaris Project. Talk to your children about the importance of being smart on the web. Warn of the dangers of chatting with strangers, sharing personal information and images. Be a conscious consumer. Hold businesses accountable by purchasing fair trade certified products. Chocolate, coffee, electronics, and clothing are just a few of the products that are tainted by labor trafficking which can affect children. Visit slaveryfootprint.org to find out how many slaves around the world have worked for you by taking their survey. You may be surprised by the information it provides. Bring up internet safety to your school's PTA or PTO. Start an initiative that encourages both parents and teachers to work in tandem to protect children. Encourage the local and national media to put a spotlight on trafficking issues. Every day around the country, there are articles published about domestic minor sexual trafficking occurring in all 50 states. Collectively, these articles demonstrate that domestic minor sexual trafficking is an epidemic and no community is immune. One national media outlet that has made a strong commitment to the anti-trafficking effort is CNN. CNN runs a website called the CNN Freedom Project, Ending Modern Day Slavery. This website provides constantly updated information about human trafficking news happening all around the world. Advocate for change with your elected officials. Human trafficking and domestic minor sexual trafficking are issues that transcend party lines. Liberal or conservative, Republican or Democrat, no one can deny that trafficking is an egregious human rights violation. No one deserves to have their freedom taken from them. Freedom is the ideal that our country was founded upon. As we discussed earlier, legislation at the federal and state level is constantly reviewed and updated. Tell your representatives that you expect their support and cooperation in the fight against domestic minor sexual trafficking. College students can start anti-sexual trafficking campaigns on their local campuses. Make your school aware that DMST occurs in every single community. Talk with your local law enforcement. Have they had comprehensive domestic minor sexual trafficking training? Can they identify a true DMST victim? If not, why? Be aware. Know that your child, what your child is doing online. With so many access points, it can seem daunting, but it can be successfully done. Volunteer with a youth development organization like Big Brothers and Big Sisters or the Boys and Girls Club. Have a preventative approach to domestic minor sexual trafficking in, in your community by providing a positive adult influence to a child in need. Do what you love. 
use your talent to fight domestic minor sexual trafficking. We are all unique individuals who are capable of achieving greatness when we work together. Make a video, write a song, give a speech, draw a poster. Your heart is the key to ending the suffering of thousands of people. I encourage you to shout from the rooftops that trafficking must end now. And together, our voices raised in unison shines a light on the victims that have remained hidden for far too long. I would like to thank everyone who has taken the time to watch this presentation. Please remember that sexual trafficking victims can be of any age, race, or sex. The sexual exploitation of children has become an epidemic within the United States that cannot be ignored. The biggest resource is public awareness. Organizations like the Wayne Foundation could not be possible without the contributions and support of people like you. Together, I believe that we can end the supply of domestic minor sexual trafficking victims through prevention, education, and rehabilitation.